Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm, I'm Eleni. Nice Eleni. to meet you. Nice Eleni, to meet you. Yes. Oh, it looks so beautiful. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah, it's it's one of the games I was very excited to, to yeah. get to know about. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. So there's not going to be space for if I go off of the board, is there? Um, up to here, I think people can see. Okay, let's see. So we need to rearrange this just a little bit then. Okay. And I just want to show people the, the cover. Sure. Uh, who is the, the artist? Oh, I don't know. It's beautiful though. Ah, okay, the cover is from Enrique Coromines. All right. Yeah. So, what is Lacrimosa? Can you tell us about it? Yeah, sure. Um, so, the basic idea is mm -hmm. that uh, after Mozart has died, right. his requiem remained unfinished. So, uh -huh. his widow Constance uh, decided that she wanted to, she needed the, the money that he was owed for the completion of the, of the, uh, of the requiem. Okay. And so, she wanted to uh, get hire people to complete it on his behalf. So that's based in real history, right? Right. In the game, uh, Constance has solicited the help of some of Mozart's former patrons, mm -hmm. who are the players, to uh, hire composers to contribute to the Requiem, or um, to travel around to Europe and speak with people that Mozart had spoken with during his travels to recreate mm -hmm. memories, um, perform, uh, buy, buy and perform opuses, and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so in the game, uh, you've got your 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 main board areas. These are your memory cards. And I'll explain how a lot of this works in uh -huh. a little bit. So you've got your, your your memory cards here and your opus cards. You've got the travel area, uh, which I is need your to map. Show, yeah. yeah, these are the memory cards. Okay. okay. Um, the travel area, which is your map here. Mozart's going to start here, um, and you've got your rec your requiem area. Okay, uh -huh. which is where you're going to contribute. Uh, some of these these notes here, eighth notes and sixteenth notes. You're composing. Yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, there's a little bit of an area control mechanism here that takes place at the end of the game. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, you've also got your player board here. Mm -hmm. On your player board, you have the notes that you're going to contribute to the requiem. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, this little money tracker that gives you money and victory points at the end mm -hmm. of each round. I guess we can put it, can, can uh, put it yeah. like here. Yeah. Sure. I can hold it. Sure, sure. Yep. Okay, great. And you've got your story track. Mm -hmm. uh, there are three different story tracks, uh, black, black, red, and white, and white, and they all correspond to different sections of the board. So, for example, the, and these are resources. Mm -hmm. So you're going to use your white resources to contribute to the Requiem, mm -hmm. your red resources to travel, and your black resources to acquire cards. Right. Okay. okay? Uh, now, during your turn, uh, every player is going to start with a deck of nine cards, plus one opus. Um, and uh, the cards allow you to do different things. A round consists of four turns. Mm -hmm. So on my turn, I'm going to draw four cards, and uh, these will, let's say that I got, just so they're different, uh, this one and this one. Okay, perfect. Uh, on, my, on my first turn, I'll draw four cards, mm -hmm. okay? And the cards will tell me different actions that I can take during the game. Uh, but you notice they're two-sided. One is to take an action and another is to give a resource. So what I'll do on my turn is I will, uh, let's say I want to take an action. So I'm going to go here, I'll slide this in here like this. Mm -hmm. And that means I'm going to take the travel action. Okay. Okay. And so then I can go to the map here and decide where I want to move, Mo move Mozart, paying the coins. Let's say I want to go here for this tile. Mm -hmm. I'll have to pay one red from my story track. Mm -hmm. And then I get this tile, I get this reward, which is um, for every specific type of religious opus that I have, I get to advance two on the money track, mm -hmm. essentially, right? And this tile gets discarded. Another thing, and then uh, with one of the other cards in my hand, mm -hmm. on that same turn, I'll slide it into here, like that. And that means that uh, at the end of the, the round, I'm going to get to move my story, my black story track uh, tracker up by one. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'll do that. I keep these two cards the next for the next round. I'll draw two more. Uh, I love how this looks like a composer's book or something. Well, yeah, it I is guess. actually. If you you can't, I can't flip it over, but on the oh. other side, it. it, it wow. Porfa. 
Yeah, so oh, you, you, you're, you hit it right on the head, so you see it looks like this. Oh, I love that. And then it goes up like that. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um, the other actions you can take in the game, you can play one of these to take one of these memory cards here. Mm -hmm. And they there's these, these cards are like upgrade cards. There's a big element of the game, which is deck management, where mm -hmm. you're trying to get rid of the, the less productive cards and substitute them with more productive cards. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's something else you can do. You could uh, perform or sell an opus. So you notice here you have the opus cards. Mm -hmm. um, this one's a religious op uh, uh No, 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 this one, for this one, if I perform it, I get two, two uh, ducats. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I decide to sell it, I get to move up one on the money track, and but it doesn't give me any victory points. Some of them mm -hmm. give you victory points and advancements on the ducat track, mm -hmm. okay? So that's the opus card. This is card allows you to contribute to the requiem. And then basically what you're going to do is you're going to take one of these notes from the corresponding section of the cathedral. You notice you have, uh, for example, the choir, the organ, violins, the timpani, and the, uh, and the, the trumpets and trombones. So maybe I take one of the, uh, I want to contribute over here. Let's just say we're in year five. And I can put it on this one from my, because it corresponds to the, the, the trombone section. Mm -hmm. And then I would take one of these tiles from the composer. There's a cost. But then uh, I can substitute it here on this, and it gives me bonuses throughout oh, the game. Oh, okay. 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 So, and then at the end of the game, you're you're trying to get the most of one type of note in mm -hmm. these different sections, and then you get a lot of points for that. It's a really great way to rack up a lot of points mm -hmm. at the end of the game. I won't go into much further detail than that. Okay. Okay. Um, but it's a really cool element that can swing the game in big ways at the end, like mm -hmm. we're talking lots of points, 30, 40 points, and can really change the tide of the right. game. Right. Yeah. And then the last is, thing. Is this more for, for more advanced players, let's say, or? No, it's all part of the regular okay. game. Okay. Well, I'd say, well, in terms of weight, you could call the game 3.3, uh, 3.4 out of 5, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So it's not, um, mechanically, the game is very simple, mm -hmm. but understanding the strategy and all the different bonuses that you can get and like yeah uh it's it's pretty deep actually mm -hmm. and i after the first time i played i thought hmm, this is a very interesting game now i wonder what would happen if i had tried this strategy and so that's what players are going to do they're going to say oh wow okay now i get how this works and this works they're going to want to try and play it over and over because the strategies right. are really interesting and the way you mix the different strategies is, is interesting as well. Right. Uh, how many players can play? It's one to four. One to four? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I don't think there is a lot of games that take this theme, right? Like, this no. is a very unique sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, a lot of people have said, oh my God, there's yeah. there aren't that many music themed games yeah, out there. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And people obviously love Mozart and the Requiem, mm -hmm. and it's gotten a lot of attention just based on the theme mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. But the good thing is the game backs it up, so it's not just right. thematically cool, it's a right, good game, right, right? Right, And yeah, you can compose music, this blew my mind completely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't really know all the different parts, but so far it looks like super intriguing. Yeah, and, yeah. And beautiful. Um, and yeah, we have questions from the chat. What drove you to the theme? basically like. uh, okay well i'm not the designer but mm -hmm. uh i have yeah. spoken with the designers about it and basically uh one of them his father was a huge mozart fan and okay. he died recently um, and so he wanted to uh do this as honor. kind of an, an honor for his father okay. and so when our publishing team was talking with the designers uh when our publisher david esprit was talking with the designers they were listing off all these different themes that you know okay we we're thinking about this 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 and it, as soon as they said uh, the Requiem, David said, stop. I want the rights to that game. And right. so then they started to work on it. And about six months later, they had the first prototype. And that was in, uh, I guess, June of last year. And so then from there, they got they worked on it really fast and got it developed. But that was the main uh, main wow. source of the idea. Wow. Uh, how, how long has this been developed uh, then? Like, this is two years? You Sort of well, so work. I think they started working on it in uh, around October, November of 2020. Okay. And then, uh, so David, David gave them the green light, and then they presented some rough ideas in March, and then the first prototype in June. Mm -hmm. That's how I understand the chronology right. of it. Right. And then right. we got the, the final files and everything uh, mm -hmm. early this year. Yeah. 
Well, I can understand the, the hype around this game oh, this year. Oh, good. I'm glad. And yeah, I'm showing again the, the cover because I really like it. And where can people get this game? Like for people who are at Essen, uh -huh. where can they get it? Well, they can get it at our booth. We uh -huh. still have a few copies left. Oh, it, okay. Yeah, it's uh, Hall 3, booth 104. Okay. Um, and then later, we'll, uh, we'll, you'll be able to get it through a lot of your standard, here in Europe anyway, mm -hmm. a lot of your standard uh, online retailers as well as uh, through our own website. I'll just plug Devere's website, uh, yeah. you can get it there. Uh, and that should be available probably mid-October. Okay. okay, so very soon. Yeah, very, very soon. Great. Very soon. And uh, what languages are they going to be available? Uh, we try to do all of our own games in five languages. Uh -huh. So where we have offices, so English, Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, and Catalan. Oh, Catalan? Yeah, really? yeah, Catalan. Wow. Well, we have our, our offices in Barcelona, wow. so of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. Wow, okay. Check it out, guys. This looks absolutely stunning. Uh, thank you so much for, for presenting it. No, thank you for the opportunity. It's been, uh, uh, been really for fun. For me, it's like uh, the, the best few days I've been at Essen because people get here and explain the games and show me these beautiful games uh -huh. instead of me just being at the booth hidden and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is fantastic for me. Great, great. And uh, we have another game from Devere. Yes, we do.